I have long been considered an actor's director, finding my greatest creative satisfaction in the writing and performance aspects of filmmaking. That is because the production of the film is technical. The writing and performance of the film is the soul. This has aligned with my change in the perception of the historic canon. Instead of seeing cinema as a form of iconography or idolatry, I came to see it as a living experience. When I had taken to AI filmmaking, I took my primary interest in performance. My skill set in the theatre as a dramatist allowed my films to stand out. My films were from the start lauded for their realistic machine performances. This was the thing, they were machines. And how do we direct machines to have soul? Well, I had answered this in a way you would not expect. Now, window seats had around 12 speaking parts. Dread Club Vampire's Verdict had 35 speaking parts. A very long carriage ride is coming along with a full 60 speaking parts. The more, the merrier. But in the process of three films, something changed in how I handled performances. I had changed in my interest in capturing realism. I had evolved into wanting something more than realism. I embraced machine artifice. I called it the infinite performance. What if realism isn't the end goal either? What if we are aiming for something beyond realism? From perfection to pleasure. When directing a very long carriage ride, as typical, I had flagged dozens of unnatural machine readings for replacement. Uh, these sounded artificial, off, off kilter, eccentric. I was in a bind. These hyper-real misfires were also strangely beautiful. They didn't sound human. They sounded better. Eventually, I decided to keep every one of these readings in the film. They were weird, wrong, or off, but they were extremely interesting, pleasurable, aesthetic. Cartoons developed their own visual vocabulary of expression, those sudden cuts to exaggerated expressions that would be impossible in live action. This is because the viewer and artist accepts the premise that animation is a heightened reality. Machine performance, likewise, is developing its own unique magic trick. I will play with the performances like alchemy, combining two halves of two completely wrong readings to form a chaotic monstrosity, a handcrafted machine bonbon. She said you barged in on her naked once. She was afraid to do the same, especially with Scott about. This came from three different takes, each wildly different. The impossible combination of the three formed something greater. They found her in bed with the guard. She was thoroughly interrogated. Uh, uh, they got her off saying she misspoke that she wasn't Miss Eberly at all. She said you barged in on her naked once. She was afraid to do the same, especially with Scott about... There's one line he talks so fast it enters in the range of the absurd... Set words do what words shall do, Cousin oh, Martini. what a peculiar point of view. For if only word remains within the lips, but words wide reach return daggers to them back autumn, well, sometimes. Let word do what word shall ah, do. Ah, truly? <laughs> You'd only heard the words of others. They lead, you follow, they tell you, obey. Uh, when you make them, do ensure they are your own. When combining voice acting with post-scarcity infinite cinema, when introducing the infinite into readings, you are not getting reality. You are achieving a higher, hyper-reality that is even better than regular acting. In fact, the aforementioned actor, who I call Rogers, doesn't seem human at all. The virtuosos. Rogers stands alone. He has now appeared as a major character in five of my AI feature films. Triswold in Dread Club Vampire's Verdict. Meanwhile, your only claim against Duchamp are his many charitable methods to help in the downtrodden. Right. No further questions. Cousin Martini in a very long carriage ride and three upcoming films. Naturally, I have been called for your peculiar activities around Gooseberry have led to word that can bring down the whole Watt clan and everyone around Trish us. Triswold is the best machine actor in the world. In fact, were he a live action actor, I believe he would have won an Academy Award for both Dread Club and Carriage Ride. Our next collaboration is called My Boyfriend as a Superhero. Partially inspired by the movie Galaxy Quest, the film is about a cheesy 1960s Batman-style superhero TV show and how its snobby actors get caught up in a real superhero adventure. Regis, I got the book. Abigail, the algorithm right here. Hi, algorithm, I got the book. Take me with you. 
An adventure! Ah, I am ill of this. The company is imploding. We do nothing. Oh, come on. You make seven figures, you're gonna get a huge buyout when this whole place crumbles. She speaks the truth. I quickly realize that writing lines for him is an act of futility, choosing to improvise with him directly without a script. In Carriage Ride, where he played Cousin Martini, I added the character quirk of having him break into French at random. We shall be sharing in this carriage there, you and I. Rider! Vite amenez la voiture! C'est une trompette! Amenez Docteur Beverly! Now, improvisation has always been a thing, but by the editor, after the shoot... After a while, you begin seeing your machine actors as real people and start writing roles for them directly. This happened with Arthur Hayes in a very long carriage ride. You know you've done the service of the century taking him from drink. But Mr. Brandy is no good man. A madman saw me through to be a gentleman of means, eh, despite his latent corruption in his association with Donaldson and Mr. Crump. Then there is Joan. She first starred as Betty Gray in Dread Club Vampire's Verdict. Ah, We're in Bone Cove, the home of Apocalyptica. You can't stop us from reading the book. She was not a great actor, but a homely lead. She was there to be underrated. You forget, she just carried an entire picture on her shoulders. I don't... I don't want to fix him. I want to lose myself with him. I want to disappear with him. When you talked about Felix, I just thought how lucky he when was. When it came time to cast Katie Bloom in a very long carriage ride, one of the star characters in the screenplay, none of the prospective voices were working. So I thought, why not Joan again? I took Betty Gray and I added a pinch of British. Because you're a nasty mess and I'll ding you in the face. More British. Finally, I got Betty speaking in a British accent. Aha, I don't know about this. Autumn! For now, she was a temp. But still the same problem. A great star, not a great actor. There's no killer. And if someone stabs you, I'll stitch his up. I would wake up some mornings nagging myself. There's still time to change her out. Two farmers, happy and gay. Hello! But the more I went, the more I realized these readings she's giving are so bizarre, so eccentric, but completely delightful. Oh, shut up! None of us care about your elephants. In my boyfriend is a superhero. I used Katie again. Are you coming to bed? Just one second. I am brushing my teeth. What planet is this woman from? Engaging neural wave shield generator with subatomic frequency lock. Haha, <laughs> yes! I found her to be unbelievably charismatic. Eagle, it's the chick. Activate all weapon systems. Sheer, lovable spunk. The snake charmer got to the supermind. It's shut up! His mind is mush. I am sorry, I cannot grant access. But without the supermind, we cannot access the eagle. Unless we do it old school, friend. I am trying. Chick? It just won't budge no matter what I, am I sorry. do. sorry. Yes. I cannot yes. grant We access. know you are sorry. Now let us in so we can access the eagle. There is also Mr. Johnson, who also played Mr. Dot in Carriage Ride, whose every line delivery is a slice of cake. As a matter of fact, the mental realm consistently engages, regardless of the external circumstance I find myself in. There is Lainey Langdon, an actress I became obsessed with. And now we gather like shadows at the edges of their celebrations. Three broken mirrors reflecting back the truth they refuse to see. The commonality, Rogers, Joan, Mr. Dot, Mr. Hayes, Langdon. It is that word, joy. I use this to directly illustrate the question. What will be found in the infinite of post-scarcity? In fact, the best actors in the world will appear immediately, trivially, in the post-scarcity infinite. Cinema as we know it. The best cinema emerged basically at the start of the AI cinema revolution. Now, there is a precedent in cinema for embracing alternate styles of performance, a la the infinite performance, just in the other direction, the ascetic performance. Robert Bresson and Bertolt Brecht. Robert Bresson's theory of the model, his term for non-professional actors, provides an especially illuminating parallel to the machine pleasures. Bresson would direct his models to deliver deliberately non-naturalistic performances, stripping away conventional acting technique in search of something more essential. Where Bresson sought transcendence through reduction, machine performance offers the possibility of transcendence through addition, building performances from precisely calibrated moments of aesthetic perfection. This connects to Bertolt Brecht's concept of the Verfremdung's effect, or alienation effect, where moments that break the audience's immersion can serve a deeper artistic purpose. In machine performance, we see this principle operating in unexpected ways. During one moment in a very long carriage ride, the machine performance glitches. Protagonist Autumn Watt briefly sounds like a man. An apple's worth more than my life. It creates a moment of Brechtian alienation, but it is so jarring it for a moment is like the whole machine reality of the film takes a bow. But 
There is another reason I keep the flaws beyond the new machine cinema. It's personal. I got into AI cinema with a vision that each new film would honestly track the limits of the technology from the very beginning to the present moment. But from the very start, I faced an unexpected backlash. Anti-AI opponents who remain quiet as a moth when Hollywood uses AI, like in films such as Here or The Brutalist, form an uproar when independent filmmakers use AI. Opponents demand perfection from a nascent technology rather than enjoy the miracle the tools exist at all. Art was never about perfection, something opponents to AI paradoxically agree. We want AI perfect this second, and how dare you think machine perfection can ever match flawed human art? In my view, perfection is trivial. That is the easy part. No need for any catch-22. It is better we document the fledgling technology with the whole truth. In the process, we discover a new cinematic language, a machine aesthetic that surpasses human possibility. To be Bressonian here, or even Brechtian, would be to make robotic, crude, digital voices, perhaps. I would wager maximalism, naturalism tuned to the extremes in machine acting pleasure, is the natural path via the post-scarcity infinite protocol of AI cinema. For Bresson and Brecht had budgetary and resource limitations to warrant their performance philosophy, their models were devised off ascetic cinema, a natural haven for scarcity, and maximalism is the natural haven for post-scarcity. The Japanese aesthetic tradition. Japanese theatre emphasises movement in a way alien to other cultures. They even have their own word for the aesthetic pleasure in watching performers move in a transcendent way, called Goho. It is why the Japanese cinema tradition carries so much motion, blocking and precision, and why this is so jarring to Western viewers, who relegate their films to wide, medium and close-up coverage. This attention to the minute details of performance distills performance into non-reality. What if we applied goho to je ne sais quoi, aesthetic beauty of movement, to machine performance? Shakespeare's texts traditionally oscillated between naturalistic and heightened performance styles. What if we approach these texts, treating each line like a note in a Rachmaninoff piano piece tuned not for realism or even traditional dramatic effectiveness, but for pure aesthetic pleasure. What would algorithmically the most enjoyable Shakespeare performance sound like with a director alongside it to ensure that it captures truth? A new aesthetic vocabulary. Oh, you shall see her and what a grand reunion it shall be. When directing machine performances, I often find oh, myself in a peculiar you shall position. See her. Reviewing video recordings of my own be. directing sessions, I have no clear technical explanation oh, for what I'm listening you for shall see in her. each take. And what a grand reunion it shall be. It is baffling, even insane, to watch me generate lines over and over again. Oh, oh. They all sound more or less you the same to the outside observer. And what a grand reunion it shall be. Yet in the moment of creation, my instincts oh, are precise and clear. You shall see her. And what a grand reunion. This it suggests will be. that machine direction, like traditional directing, remains <coughs> fundamentally an artistic see rather that. than technical Ooh, process. And what a grand reunion it shall be. As AI has come to match the forms of traditional cinema within just two years of its development, we learn AI is not aiming to match cinema, it is aiming for something far beyond cinema. Cinema is just and the starting point we have arrived at shall already. The lady claim directly it in his sounds hand. crazy on the surface. But then here I am. I look down and stare at the screen as lines of dialogue that don't sound like they were delivered by human beings shout back at me. And my response is no longer to replace them. They are just too gorgeous. Mr. Hayes, I cannot do it. Years and years, Mr. Brandy. You must. I cannot. You must do it, sir. For me, sir. For all leave that I have gone Just through. leave me If be. not for yourself, you must end this tale. Mr. Mr. Brandy, you will see I fear. I and what fear a grand I have grown too fond be. of my destitution. You shall see No, 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 just And what me a be. grand reunion it shall Mr. be. Mr. Hayes. For you will be accompanied. You will be accompanied by men that even they would fear. Yes, Mr. Oh, Hayes. Oh, you yes. will see her. And <laughs> you will yes, be guarded, yes, sir. Hayes. And place the yes. lady claim directly ha, ha. in his hand.